Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. I'm out here pretty early. It's like six in the morning, trying to beat the heat. Anyway, um, I thought I'd do a quick video on uh, some different types of uh, AR-15, M16 magazines that I own. And uh, what, what prompted the video was I just recently purchased the uh, OK Industry SureFeed. And this is their E2 version. They also sell the standard version magazine, and you can also order uh, custom magazines from them. But anyway, I went with the enhanced, and the main difference between the enhanced and a standard magazine is the feed lip design. Um, these are USGI Surplus, uh, Lancer, Magpul Generation 3, and a Men 2. But anyway, you can see on the... Uh, on the feed lamps here on the sure sure feed that they're angled back whereas on the uh, GI surplus they're straight cut um, even amongst the uh, the GI surplus there's some some small differences depending on who made the the magazine on the feed lips like you can see this is straight cut here this is radius this is somewhere in between a straight cut and a radius and the same with this one here so um, this is a brand new SureFeed E2. This is an adventure line that was actually made by Parsons. This is Parsons Precision, same company. And this is OK Industries. And this is Center Industries. This is an L5 AWM Lancer Magpul M3 Generation 3. And this is the Amend. And the other thing I failed to mention on the SureFeed that on the their E2 model, um, it starts the first round from the right. So you'll see the dummy round on the follower is on the left, where all the other mags, uh, their followers, uh, go with the uh, the standard feed configuration, starting on the first round on the left. Um, all my, all of my GI surplus mags that I purchased back in the 90s came with the uh, original black follower, which was, had some issues, was kind of prone to feeding issues. It would tilt inside the magazine. And uh, the next generation follower was, was the green. And you can see the uh, larger tabs on the, on the side here to, to keep it from uh, tilting. Anyway, I, I had a few issues using the black, not, not too many. Um, just about had no feeding issues using the green followers. And since I switched over to the Magpul um, four-way anti-tilts, I've had no feeding issues on any of my mags, on my uh, GI surplus mags. So um, that's the primary differences. Um, the other thing on the, uh, the sure feed, uh, the housing is dimpled, so you get a little better grip. And these are anodized and painted or PTFE'd. So you can get tan, you can get black, or you can get the, um, the standard gray color. Okay. So you can see on the, uh, the sure feed has pretty much the same dimensions as the uh, government issues. Um, so I guess we could consider this a stenag dimension. And for those of you that might not be familiar with that term, uh, stenag, stenag, however you want to pronounce it, um, it's two words combined. It's actually an acronym. Um, stan stands for standardization and the A, AG means agreement. So at one time, um, NATO was trying to standardize all their uh, magazine dimensions and so that's how they came up with Stanag standardization agreement it never got fully adopted by the rest of NATO but the idea was to get every NATO rifle that that fired 556 uh, depending on what country and and what army or whatever military force was to make sure that all of the NATO magazines would fit all NATO rifles and like I said it was never fully adopted and the Stanag agreement was basically just um, external dimension agreement. 
so you could still make the magazine out of plastic you could change your your follower configuration around a little bit but the idea was to get all of these to fit all NATO rifles now you can see the Lancer is a little bit taller probably because of the thicker base plate mag pulls a little bit taller than the, the Lancer and the MN2 is the tallest out of all the magazines okay so cosmetically the sure feed is flawless and I ordered 12 of these I ordered uh, six in black and six of these in tan and when I got them there is not a dent ding scratch coating imperfection um, all the weld seams are very accurate the welds are very uniform I mean out of all of these magazines even including the polymers this this thing cosmetically is just man it's it's fantastic and uh, really impressed with the quality on the new Surefeed E2s um, this adventure line I would say it's not the best of the surplus mags but it's it's not bad the welds are pretty uniform everything's lined up on the seams um, so dimensionally this this isn't too bad the only maybe slight criticism I have is on the feed lips here where they they straight cut it and if you're hand loading these with your thumb or whatever that could eventually make your thumb kind of sore um, Parsons Precision cosmetically was was probably the next best as far as uh, weld seams and and out of all the surplus mags I would say cosmetically appearance wise the OK Industries is the best the welds are just great all the seams are like perfectly lined up and so OK Industries on their back when I bought these back in the 90s they really made a, a nice looking mag now out of all of these surplus mags I have Center Industries is the worst I mean if you look at the coating you look at the welds I mean I mean it, it works but it's not cosmetically appearance wise it's it's the worst of the bunch it just it doesn't look good the, the weld seams aren't straight the uh, weld the welds are inconsistent they uh, did look something a little different on theirs too they have these holes and I guess these were alignment holes uh, maybe they I don't know why those are there but and then the uh, what can I say about the polymers I mean that's so anyway the, the next thing I was going to talk about was um, feed lip dimensions and these all have a a go and a no go width um, I couldn't actually find st Stenag or the original uh, dimensions um, they're, they're just kind of hard to find but I did find some dimensions from uh, Emble, Enfield, and Brownell sells a gauge that you can slide into the back and uh, give you a go or no go. So um, here's Emble's dimensions and 0.457 plus or minus two thousandths. So you have a range of 0.455 to 459. Enfield gives you front and rear dimensions so Enfield says that they don't have to be the same depending on whether you're measuring at the front or measuring at the rear they can be a little different within within their range and then like I was saying here's uh, Brownells uh, go so they don't want to see anything smaller than a 0.45 or 454 and they don't want to see anything bigger than a 0.475 so I just, out of curiosity, I just did a sample measurement for these particular mags. Now, feed lip width is obviously going to vary depending on which mag you actually have. So this is just kind of a random sampling. But um, 
on the sure feed it came in at uh, 456 and 462 between measuring between the rear and the front so that would be measuring the rear and the front of the feed lips so I did that on all of them and they, they are all of them were in spec except for the polymers the polymers ran uh, very tight to the point that compared to the US GI mags these have the appearance of being out of spec but I doubt that they really are out of spec I think that these mags you could probably run the feed lip width um, a little bit on a tight side even if it looks to be out of spec and they still function fine um, I've ran these in all my different ARs so even though the uh, the specs are quite a bit tighter and I, I got a theory as to why they do it I can't explain it for Lancer because Lancer has the reinforced metal steel feed lips but I'm wondering if maybe they run these a little tighter on the polymers is because when you get these things fully loaded with 20 30 rounds the uh, polymer is going to spread a little bit then that's just speculation on my point just a theory but um, so like I said I'll show the dimensions one more time but they're basically all in, in spec other than the polymers running running tight and um, something else I wanted to mention was uh, M855A1 ammunition. Um, apparently, when they first introduced it to the Army, I think it was officially accepted by the Army in, uh, I want to say, 2016. Maybe it was 2014. Anyway, I'm not a not an 855A1 expert. But um, apparently, they may have had some uh, feed ramp issues and uh, these rounds weren't being chambered correctly and uh, they were eating up the aluminum feed ramps on the receiver and even chewing up the, the barrel extensions. Now, supposedly that's what was happening and it wasn't necessarily a result of the ammunition design. It was probably more along the lines of worn out mags, low spring tensions, and uh, that was actually the root cause, even though it was the ammunition causing the damage because the 855A1 has an external steel core where the 855 has an internal steel core. Anyway, um, the Army came out with what was called the Enhanced Performance Magazine. And they changed the feed lip uh, ramp angle a little bit and they made some other minor changes to the magazine that were supposed to help reduce um, any possible feed ramp damage to, to the rifles. Um, there's another theory about the 855A1 being loaded a little bit hotter. You know, there's an extra 100, 200 feet per second there that maybe that was causing uh, barrel erosion a little bit quicker. Anyway, um, there may be credence to this. There may not be. There was a good article uh, that I ran across online. I'm going to link that in the description. And this is a uh, uh, an ex-active duty army guy that had quite a bit of experience with the uh, 855 versus 855A1 and he did a, a really good write-up. Um, the other thing about the Enhanced Performance Magazine, um, there was quite a few issues with that when it was first introduced to the army and not necessarily because of design but because of QC quality. Um, the magazines weren't being manufactured to spec so there's another guy running a channel called um, uh, cav trooper 19d and he did a video uh, a couple years ago on uh, what he was given in the army as far as the en enhanced performance magazine that was specifically designed to shoot the 855a1 and he has an actual couple of the of the magazines and he's showing the, some of the quality issues and the problems that they had with with the enhanced magazine that was supposed to solve any possible problems with the 855A1 ammunition. Anyway, um, 855A1 ammunition is, in my opinion, for the civilian market, it's kind of uh, unicorn ammunition. It's it's hard to come by. It's just not readily available. Um, 
and if you do happen to run across it it's very expensive i've seen prices up to four and five dollars per round i'm not spending four or five dollars on a five five six round i mean that's getting up there around 50 bmg prices so anyway uh, I, I just shoot the old school stuff the uh m193 and uh sometimes i'll shoot the uh the regular eight by five but i i have really no reason to uh, try to find or, or shoot the 855A1. Um, my understanding is, and this is mostly according to the guy's article I read, um, the Lancers and the Magpul Generation 3s, um, they seem to be able to feed the 855A1s pretty well. And so that's kind of your basic choices if you do want to run that stuff. Would be your Lancer would probably be your third choice. Your second choice would be Magpul. And if you got a, an EPM mag, an enhanced performance magazine that was in spec, that would probably work the best. So that's where we're at on the 855A1. Okay, so last part of this video is not really magazine related, but I just thought I'd mention it anyway. Um, I've been waiting for almost three months to get the uh, number 41 NATO primers from CCI. And normally on my uh, AR rifles, I like to run the uh, the little heavier uh, NATO primers versus the uh, the regular commercial. Um, takes a little bit more to set these off. And because the uh, ARs have a floating pin design on the, the bolt, I just like the idea of a little thicker primer so that um, possibly reduces the uh, likelihood of a slam fire should I drop the weapon or whatever. Um, like I said, I got this from uh, Mid-South Supply and they were in stock for like two days. So I just happened to stumble across it when they were in stock and I ordered them real quick and like I said, two days later they were out of stock again. Um, I'm going to be loading some some Winchester 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail. I got some uh, Hornady from Graf and Sons, and I'm going to load uh, 55 grain, and I'm going to load non-steel core 62 grain. And these are Hornady bullets, and uh, Graf and Sons buys these in big, huge bulk quantities, and then they repackage them. And uh, here's the different types of powder I'm I'm planning on using. Um, this is 231. This is generally, a lot of people use this for 45 ACP. I'm going to be doing some 45 uh, reloading. But these are the three powders that I chose for uh, 223. And I wanted to try some Varget, but I can't find Varget. It's stuff is always out of stock. So uh, when I run across some Varget, we'll, we'll do some loads using that. And here's all my brass, and I got it all separated by head stamp. And it's all ready to go. And um, one thing I forgot to mention about the, uh, the Magpul magazine is the Generation 3 comes with this uh, cover that snaps in over the top and it serves two basic purposes. Um, it's a dust cover, but it also helps to keep the polymer feed lips from spreading over time if you've got this magazine loaded up. And they're Gen 2s. Um, over time, the feed lips had a tendency to spread and then you'd have some problems with the magazine. So anyway, in a Gen 3, this is this is what they did to, to solve that problem. It just fits over the top, snaps in place, and keeps the uh, the feed lips where they're supposed to be. So anyway, uh, I think that's about it for today. Like I said, you might want to check out uh, Cav Trooper 19D, his channel. He's got a lot of uh, a lot of good videos. He he shares a lot of information. Okay, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.